Alright, I'm Brock Hanna, or Brock Christian Hanna, as you know, you all know about my middle name. But um, my research was on the muscular development of female athletes, a possibility to predispose female athletes to an anterior cruciate ligament injury. Um, to start off, my research question going into this was if playing certain sports develops a female athlete's muscles differently than playing that of another sport. Um, I hypothesize that playing certain sports can develop an athlete's muscles differently due to the different movements that each sport has to offer, like volleyball, you do repeated jumping, soccer, and basketball, there's a lot of cutting involved. Um, I also hypothesize that women's volleyball would have a more muscular balance than that of other sports. Um, my participants in this study, I had five from each team, and the three teams that I looked at were women's volleyball, women's basketball, and women's soccer. So there was a 15 total participants. Um, with that, each team also had to volunteer one person, and that one person had a previous ACL injury. And that was to study someone that was already injured and their differences. Um, limitation that I had among this with the participants is that Women's basketball and women's soccer had athletes that had, had a previous ACL injury. Women's volleyball, however, had not. So in my research, um, I used a female athlete that had a previous MCL injury. Due to this, this is still looking at this injury and can cause instability of the knee, but not to the same extent of his ACL. Um, to test my hypothesis, I went through, I measured the Q angle of each athlete, and this was to determine if there were any mechanical differences in the athletes. I also went through and um, did a one rep max of double leg seated quadriceps extension and a one rep max of double leg seated hamstring curls to determine the uh, one rep max of those muscles. Also, best balance assessment test, which is the same thing we do for our concussion testing here, except with this, I was measuring stability of the knee. And um, with that, the patients were graded on the amount of repositioning that they had to do. And repositioning was determined as the same guidelines that we do for concussions. Um, if they open their eyes, they got deducted a point. And, um, lifted their forefoot, midfoot, their hips, went to the sides at greater than 30 degree angles. Um, if they remained out of the testing procedure for more than five seconds before stepping off the balance board itself. Um, I also had the participants complete a vertical jump test. And this was not to determine the height in which they jumped, but this was to determine landing mechanics through the phases of jumping. And from our results, um, I did correlations for each sport between uh, quadricep strength and hamstring strength. This is a piercing correlation. Um, it didn't copy and paste the way I wanted to, but this is how it did. Um, as you can see, a uh, significant correlation would be from the 0 0.05 area, and the correlation here is at 0 0.099 for quadricep strength and hamstring strength. Hamstring strength. And this is for women's soccer. Uh, these are the correlations for women's basketball between quadriceps strength and hamstring strength. I'm not your way about. Um, as you can see here, we have points 304, or, sorry, 0.314, and then here we have 0.314 for hamstring. And then women's volleyball correlations for quadriceps strength and hamstring strength, hamstring strength, we had 0.158, so a little bit closer to a better significance, and we have 0.158 right here as well. Um, these are the graphs of the quadriceps strength and hamstring strengths of women's soccer team. As you can see, we have many athletes that have quadriceps dominance, as you can tell, by the significance of their quadriceps strength compared to their hamstring strength. We have one that was at a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, with 
women's basketball, as you can tell, there are still strength and balances. And then we have one that was one and one. And then we have women's volleyball with quantum strength and chemistry strength that they showed the least amount of quantum dominance as we have the athletes here, and this one's not as significant as this is. Here are the Q angle scores and landing positions of women's soccer. As you can see, we have participants one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, participant three with the asterisk is the participant that had a previous ACL injury. Um, Q angle, the normal for a, or what we perceive as normal for a female, is at 17 degrees. Uh, participant one was 12 12, participant two, 12 12, participant three was 18 18, participant four, 16 16, and participant five, 17 17. Now, with Q angles, we talk about the degrees, but um, one degree here, one degree there, both ways is not really that big of a deal. However, the 12 12, as you can see, is kind of a big deal. It's more to the junior barrel angles. And uh, participant one, Landed with a boundary slowed upon the knee, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. Uh, participant two landed with a boundary slowed. <coughs> participant three, who had previously had an ACL injury, uh, landed with a boundary slowed on the knee. And participant four landed in a neutral weight bearing stance. And participant five landed with a boundary slowed upon the knee as well. Uh, women's basketball Q angle landing positions. Uh, participant one had a Q angle 16 16, and this is compared left to right. Um, participant 2 had 17, 17. Participant 3 with asterisk again was the ACL injured. Um, they had 18, 18. Participant 4 was at 16, 16. And participant 5 was at 18, 18. Uh, participant 1 landed with a neutral stance. Participant 2 with a valgus. Participant 3 with a valgus load. Participant 4 with a valgus load. And then participant 5 landed once again in a neutral stance. Women's volleyball, Q angle, and landing position. Um, participant one was at a 16, 16. Participant two, 18, 18. Participant three, 18, 18. The asterisks here are indicating the player that had the MCL injury. And we have participant four who was at 17, 17. Participant five who was at 18, 18. Boundary loads and neutral loads. Uh, participant one had ne was neutral. Participant two landed in neutral. Participant three landed with a bounce load. Participant four landed in neutral. Participant five landed in neutral. Now, as we've looked at the other two sports as well, you can see uh, women's volleyball tend to land more with a neutral angle instead of a bounce angle. Uh, this is photo analysis. Here we have a female basketball player. And as you can tell, here's her knee. There's a line going down to the floor, up to her knee, where her foot lands, and straight up her femur. This is a neutral stance. Her weight bearing is good. Beth and I talked about it. Her feet are, her, her knees are a little bit over her feet, which is not as good. However, with uh, the same, this research study, she is landing in more of a neutral stance. This athlete, however, landed with a valgus load upon this knee. This is also, this knee being in more of a neutral angle, that is showing some what of a leg dominance among that athlete, but they did land in a valgus, with a valgus load upon the knee, which, with a valgus load upon the knee, um, it is opening up the ACL to multiple pressures. Uh, say she has quadriceps dominance, and her hamstrings are as strong as they should be, those quadriceps are going to cause a tibial translation. The tibia is going to shift a little bit forward, which is going to open up that joint. With the valgus load upon the knee going to a side rotation, that is going to predispose the ACL to injury upon landing. Here we have a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, here's an athlete, and as you can tell, blue line goes from the foot up to the knee and up the femur. She's landing in a very athletic neutral stance. However, uh, this athlete did not. She landed, her hips are out, um, her knees are buckling in, and as you can see, the valgus load that is being put up on the knee. 
Um, further on with results, 80% of the women's soccer team had quadriceps dominance, 60% of the basketball team had quadriceps dominance, whereas only 20% of the volleyball team had quadriceps dominance. Now, with five participants per team, this isn't really that big of a number considering 80% is four out of five, 60% um, is three out of five, and then 20% is only one out of five. Um, with uh, valgus landing, 80% of women's soccer landed with a valgus load upon the knee. 80% uh, of the basketball team landed with a valgus load of the knee. And when I say basketball team, I mean only those five participants. Um, and then volleyball, once again, only 20% landed with a valgus load upon the knee. Now, out of the previously injured athletes, which once again is the two with ACL injury and the one with the MCL injury, they were 100% for both quadriceps dominance and landing with a valgus load upon the knee. 